For a time, the Nikon D850 was my go-to everyday shooting camera. I loved it. But for the past few months, I've been experimenting with exclusively shooting with the Sony a7R 3 and I've been running it through a series of tests to see if this should be my new camera. I did a general video a few months ago. I did a video on shooting portraits with it a couple weeks ago, and now I'm going to tell you if it's a good travel camera. So we took a family trip to Barcelona. I brought it along with the 24 to 105 f4 lens and I discovered some things that I love about it, and I discovered some things that disappointed! made me really frustrated. First, I'll cover the things that I liked about it. The first thing is the size. I've heard people say that the size difference isn't significant once you put a lens on it, but what I found is that for travel, the size difference made a difference. When I was packing this up in my bag, it was noticeably smaller than my usual setup, which is a D850, and I put the 24 to 105 on here so you can see the difference. It's kind of hard to tell on camera now that I'm looking, but you can feel that it's quite a bit lighter, quite a bit smaller, it fit in my bag nicely. That difference doesn't just matter when you're packing your camera bag, but when you're wearing it around your neck for your entire trip. So if you're like me, you're walking like 10 miles a day, your camera's hanging around your neck the whole time, you can get a stiff neck or a sore shoulder. And by the time dinner rolls around, maybe you leave it in your room because you're like, man, eh, maybe I won't get a shot and this thing's kind of a pain. I did not have that experience. I brought this to every dinner. I brought it everywhere that I went was a joy to carry around. The next thing I really liked about this camera is the resolution. I used to sometimes bring the Olympus EM10 on trips with us, and I would love shooting with it. It was a really fun camera, but it's micro four thirds, and I'm a bit of a pixel peeper, so I'd get home and I wouldn't really be that happy with the image quality. Sorry, Olympus people, I'm probably gonna get ripped apart. RIP, Chelsea, what have I done? Anyway, the nice thing is, is you get the size, but you don't compromise on quality. It's still a full frame camera. It's got 42 megapixels and even though it's easy and nice to carry around, you get those photos on your computer, you pixel peep, and the image quality is spectacular. Plus it has IBIS, so if you have a bit of a shaky hand like I do, you don't have to worry about having motion blur in your pictures as much. The next thing I learned to appreciate even more on my trip was the ease of use of the camera. So when you're on a family trip, you know, you don't always get all of that time you want to compose a photo perfectly, especially if it's a portrait of your kid or your family member and other tourists are moving all around you and it's kind of disorienting because it can be so like busy and everything's so new. And with the IIF, I could easily compose the photo and get the eye in focus and everything was just going a bit quicker than it normally does with the D850 where I kind of have to uh, move around like the autofocus point with the joystick and it takes a little extra time and my daughter grows a little less patient. Not to mention the EVF being able to look through, see what you get, chimp through the viewfinder so that you don't have to worry about not seeing your screen on a bright day. That ease of use is noticeable, especially in a hectic situation like travel. And the other thing I loved was the charging. So I just used a USB charger. It's the same exact one as my laptop, my Mac back here. So I'd come into my room, plug it in, charge the camera, wouldn't have to worry about taking out the battery and putting it somewhere else. Now, there were some things that were really frustrating me with the camera. And one is something I've complained about before, but it really hit me hard on this trip. And that is these <laughs> dials and buttons. It's not, it's not just like aesthetics. It's not just nitpicky. I would be holding my camera because Barcelona, everyone warned me, there's a ton of thieves and stuff. A photography friend messaged us and said I was just on a photo trip there and two people lost their cameras, had them stolen on the trip. So I was holding my camera like this around my waist. I'd go to raise my camera and all of the settings would be changed. Every single button and dial was being touched at all times my whole focusing mode would be changed. It just went to like ISO 12,000. It was a huge pain in the butt. And I had to remedy the problem by going in and customizing all of the buttons so that they were turned off completely because I just kept bumping them, it kept getting hit. And now I have to press the function key to get into my menus. Not usually a problem for me because with the Nikon D850, you usually have to press two buttons at a time. That really annoyed me. I think you should be able to have to push two buttons to activate. What do you think, Tony? I agree. Tony agrees. 
So you can someone, somewhat make it like the Nikon where you need to press two buttons to enable a feature, but then the original exposure compensation dial can invalidate that. And that's the reason why you would want it. I don't like it. Another problem that just came back to bite me was that the menu system's a pain. We'll give them a time lapse, but we'll call it interval shoot funk. <laughs> So here I am wondering why my focusing mode has changed and what went wrong and what buttons got bumped and I'm going through my menus and trying to figure out what's going wrong and it's not that easy. I set up my custom menu system so that has gotten simpler for everyday shooting. A minor annoyance with the camera, you have to turn it off in between shooting. And this is because the EVF, when you have it hanging by your side, it detects something by the eyepiece and so it just keeps your camera on. That's gonna drain the battery pretty quickly. That also helps with accidentally bumping all of the settings. It was kind of frustrating to be in the moment and have those issues come up and you just lose the shot. You can't always recreate a moment. Those are some pain points but I think that if you are aware of them, like me telling you now, when you can go in and fix your menus and customize your buttons and know to turn off the camera and know to check your settings because they get bumped. Overall, I enjoyed shooting with the camera. It's a tough choice. I think that the D850 and the A7R 3 are both excellent cameras. So I have to figure out if it's worth it for me. And the last test is gonna be wildlife photography. I love wildlife photography. I'm renting a Sony 400 millimeter F2.8 lens. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna to try to get bird pictures and see how that goes for me. So that video will be coming up shortly. If you wanna see that, subscribe down below so that it pops up in your feed once I'm done. If you wanna see my other two videos about portrait photography with the A7R 3 and just general shooting with the A7R 3 check the description down below and I put links there. Oh, oh.